My name is Pat Morton, and I'm from Cornell. Show some respect. As calls for Cornell, British Columbia's Mayor Ron Paul to resign because his wife, Pat Morton, read and shared a book that tells more than just the politically correct truths related to residential schools continues, so does largely one-sided media coverage that amplifies the voices of those who have deemed the book as hate literature and denialism. That's why in today's report I bring you the other side of this developing story by interviewing Pat Morton herself, whose voice keeps getting drowned out even though she finds herself at the core of this controversy. When I went to the council chambers to explain my uh, position, I felt nothing but hatred. This action I didn't feel was nor normal from the natives but, uh, that I've known over 40 years. Something triggered that hatred, and I don't think it was the book. My business is with the mayor, not with you, and it's his actions that we are condoning, not we are condemning tonight. <laughs> don't care about the book, Pat Morton. What we care about is the fact that you have no respect for your husband as the mayor of the city, and here's the here is the fallout yeah. to your actions in the community. Yeah. Moral panic is still at an all-time high in Quinell, B.C., as local First Nation Lataka Dene hasn't wavered on its declaration to no longer work with the mayor's office unless the mayor resigns. Mr. Mayor, I have no choice but to ask for your official resignation from office as mayor so we can repair the damage done by you and your wife. The harsh ultimatum, which is supported by a few of the mayor's own council members, and some in the community is a knee-jerk reaction to the mayor's wife, Pat Morton, reading historical truths found in this book, and then daring for others to do the same. Grave error, how the media misled us and the truth about residential schools. Much like my 2022 Rebel News documentary called Kamloops The Buried Truth, which you can now watch for free at our website called kamloopsdocumentary.com, the book, which is authored by several and published by True North and Dorchester last year, debunks the false claim that in 2021 the remains of 215 children who were students at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School was found in unmarked grave. I want to talk about the heartbreaking news that 215 children were found buried at the former Kamloops Residential School. 215 children. Think of their loving families that they were ripped away from. A claim that apparently for those who feel hurt by Morton reading and sharing the book and her husband, I don't know, not divorcing her for doing so, still believed to be true. The 215 in Kamloops, that the, the plenty of the abuse never really took place. It's disturbing and absolutely ripped, it rips your stomach right out. But can we really blame anyone for still believing such a horrific claim? After all, state choice media not only failed to question the narrative to begin with, and they also failed to effectively correct the record when the Tecumate Schwepmich's own expert, who claims she used ground-penetrating radar to find the remains of the children, which, by the way, isn't possible without doing excavation, did this major backpedal. My preliminary findings in May to today's results, reports providing additional information related to disturbances from archaeological impact assessments, as well as construction in parts of this area were subsequently provided to me. These reports were reviewed in order to determine which of these locations overlapped with the GPR survey areas. After this review, it was determined that there remain 200 targets of interest in these preliminary results. Everything I just said is being deemed hate literature if read, especially if seen by those who haven't even read the book. That book is just a bunch of lies. I was trying to read it, and I couldn't read it. I should bring that book here. I have it outside there. Now I'm going to burn that book Woo! right in front of you. Again, who's to blame? Especially when journalists who are repeating the claims that the book is hate literature themselves admit they haven't taken the time to read the book either. I think it's important to say that I have not read the book. Uh, we heard what Latako's Maynard Barra said about it. But Pat Morton did read and share the book. 
And here's her story on why. Well, this is what I believed in for a while. So I ordered the book and I took it to the office, but I haven't had a chance to read it. And I still haven't read it all. And I had a client come in, just one that I've known for over 30 years. And she's Métis. And I asked her if she would be willing to give me her opinion on the book. And she said yes. And then the next week, her son is on council meeting, just ditching the book, saying that um, he read it from cover to cover. And it's all it's about denialism. And my heart broke. And I thought, oh, my God, why didn't they just give me the book back and say, sorry, we can't read it. We can't give you an opinion. But I that's the only person I shared it with. Besides, I gave a copy to the school district so the girl, school district could have it in their library and if it was suitable or not, but I didn't hear from them either until I saw letters. Yeah, let's show a clip of uh, the emotions from her son. It's very, very, very uh, traumatizing. It's very, very um, disrespectful, I think, to uh, an Indigenous community and especially somebody to receive this book, you know. And, and with my dad going to residential school, she brought up a lot of stuff, let me tell you. You know, it was contesting that they didn't exist. They did, they weren't there. Those things are real. They are actually real, and they did happen to Indigenous people who went through the went through the school, right? And especially when you were just picked up, taken to the school, and you know, everything was taken away from you. So. Now, so you're saying you read a book and you actually go to an Indigenous person to try to get their opinion on it, and then boom, all of this is happening. Different people are accusing you of spreading hate literature and, of course, residential school denialism. Now, it's not just yourself. It's not just your husband who's getting backlash over this simple sharing of the book with two people. It's also some of the authors. There's several authors involved, one of which is Francis Whittleson. My colleague, Adam Seuss, has a sit-down, up-close, personal, exclusive interview coming up with her that you're going to be able to find at our website called kamloopsdocumentary.com. Now, it wasn't just uh, Francis who wasn't able to get her message out. You weren't able to get your message out either. And you tried to plead your story. You even had to withhold your address out of concerns and fear. Um, and the main focus here is to have your husband resign as mayor. They're saying because of that same rhetoric about what they believe the book is. Um, what does that feel like to you, the pushback you're getting? And of course, the call for him to resign. I saw Scott Elliott was leading the parade with a placard, Love Not Hate. I wondered what was happening. When I went to the council chambers to explain my uh, position, I felt nothing but hatred from the people in the gallery and from councillors Rudenberg and Elliott. This action I didn't feel was nor normal from the natives but, uh, that I've known over 40 years. Something triggered that hatred, and I don't think it was the book. I find uh, the call for him to resign totally unrealistic. This is not about him. This is me. And if they have a problem, they should have come to see me. I will say the letter that I wrote on March the 25th after the first meeting when they were ex they were discussing the book, I wrote a letter and it was never acknowledged. And it really saddened me that on the last meeting, when all the uh, letters were read in favor of what the narrative was that they were pushing, that my letter wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was very unjust. Yeah, that is interesting that your letter isn't there. We're putting it on the screen here. Now, something that stood out to me that you talk about is that this type of pushback uh, that the mayor is getting in Cornell isn't a new story. Something very similar happened in Williams Lake, the former mayor there, Walt Cobb, who eventually resigned after he shared something. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, Walt Cobb resigned from some of his committees, but he didn't resign from being the mayor. He waited until the next election and wasn't um, voted in. But he, he posted a letter on his personal web page, uh, on a personal Facebook page from a resident of the residential school that was very positive. He couldn't believe the, the backlash from that. And I look at it and say, why are they trying to ridicule and hurt people that are putting out a positive spin on this and trying to just keep it so negative. And I, and I felt at that time, we have to do something. And this opportunity with this book gave us the opportunity to speak out and say, 
thank you for giving us something that shows that residential schools were not there to destroy anyone. They were there to help. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something else you mentioned to me that you would have liked to have had the opportunity to read. Um, Did you want to go ahead and read that now? Yes. And I would like to read something from, I just have to get it, from Murray Sinclair. He is the former Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner Chair. And he states, we have been heartened by testimonies which affirm the dedication and compassion of committed educators who sought to nurture the children in their care. These experiences also must be heard. And in the past few years, we have not heard anything. Anybody that suggests anything positive came from residential schools is persecuted, just as I've been. And speaking of experiences needing to be heard and educators, I reached out to another educator, a history teacher of many years who was teaching in a high school in Abbotsford, BC back in 2021, where the very sensational claim that we now know was false came out that the remains of 215 children who were former students of the Kamloops Indian Residential School had been discovered. He simply told the class that if that claim is true, then it would be most likely that the children had died from diseases like tuberculosis. And that was enough to get him marched out of class and suspended, still suspended to this date, and fighting to be a teacher. Here's what he had to say about what's unfolding in Quinell. The interesting to me about Quinell is they won't name the book. They won't read the book. They're trying to cancel the truth. The book is... is are, is full of articles by people or scholars and researchers, historians, anthropologists. It's telling a broader truth about residential schools, good, bad, and, and ugly and indifferent and all sorts of things. So that's what it really is. It's, is you cancel the book, you cancel the truth, but the truth can't be canceled. And they're going to find that out. Now, there were people, citizens on the ground, who reached out to me that wanted to voice to speak up for you. But there was one in particular who was willing to bring a face to those concerns. He wants to only be called Stephen. He knows how serious the backlash is. But here is what he wanted to say about your husband in particular. Yes, well, there is a, a definitely a concern amongst the community here as our our mayor, who is known for his kindness in the community and decades of a loyal service to the community, really having given his life to the work, uh, has there's a, a real effort to cancel him, to have him resign. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite appalling to the community to think that uh, uh, through association um, by his wife uh, having or recommending a book that would shed some light or give a broader view of the residential school issue and, um, and just really a, a desire for transparency in the conversation as we would all desire to see uh, a real truth and reconciliation amongst us as neighbors. But are there more Stevens out there who are standing with you or at least out there to support you and your husband during this difficult time? It is absolutely fantastic, the outpouring of support that we've received from not just people locally, but around the province and the rest of Canada. One of the things I would like to say here, which is so important, we do not at all say that bad things didn't happen in residential schools. I understand that there there were some problems and people were hurt, but in other schools, they too were hurt and there were problems. But I'd rather we focus on, let's fix these people, let's help them get better, but don't do it by denying that there are great things that happened as well. Do you believe that the truth in Truth and Reconciliation matters, even if that truth is hard for some people to hear? Then go to our special website called KamloopsDocumentary.com. There you can find my exclusive interview with the mayor of Quinell, as well as our documentary, which is free for all to watch and share so that more truth gets out there. If you appreciate the work that we do at Rebel News, you can donate a few dollars to help support our coverage when you're there.